here they've completed one, two, three for us, so there's still one, two, three to go. And that completes the area for filter bank five. Then over here we've got filter bank six, we've completed one pour, so we've got five to complete. So you can see the, the areas are getting formed up. There's one, two, three, four, and the fifth here. They've already completed one, so they're doing quite well. Making a good job and uh, got some good, uh, good experience in this area. We're just pouring the um, a section of the filter bank. This is basically where the reactors are going to be installed. It's quite a unique uh, um, reinforcing arrangement where all the reinforcing has to be basically insulated where it crosses over so we don't get any heating or circulating currents associated with the equipment that's going to be installed on top of the slab. So very important that it's well insulated. Uh, I know in some cases they actually use um, fiberglass uh, deformed rod, but here we've used the steel rod and put an insulating sleeve where, where it crosses to, to make sure we don't get any circulating uh, circuits. So it's, uh, there's been a lot of work and it's all tied with cable ties. There's no steel ties at all uh, on the um, slab here in the filter bag. You can see here where we've basically insulated that piece of reinforcing which is the top bar and this piece of reinforcing which is the bottom bar. So it's fully insulated and tied with a nylon cable tie so there's no circulating current between the top and the bottom and that's right throughout every crossover is insulated that way so it's all basically double insulated in all directions so that's going down to the bottom layer so you see that's insulated there because of the, the likelihood of that bar touching there so that's, that's insulated there so you don't get any circulating current from, from that point to this point and of course the, the bottom layer is also where, where, the, where the crossover is fully insulated as well. Well this is filter bank number uh, six. And this is the area where the capacitors are going to be installed and it's the same printer where all the reinforcing is insulated wherever it crosses so there's no circulating part. So you can see the cable ties being put on here. Even, even the bottom layer right down in here is all uh, insulated as well. And then with the, with the overlapping bars between the top layer and the bottom layer are also insulated. So there's no circulating path for, uh, which would, could possibly cause heating effect within the slab. So it's very important this is done properly. It's always tested, totally tested before we even uh, commence a pour. So we get the electrical people in here and they use a uh, insulation tester, probably known as a mega. They do the insulation test and then prove that there's uh, no, circuit, no circulating circuit that could create heating. Yeah, this is a cable tie that we were using to basically strap the two layers of reinforcing together. So that's, that's a good solid cable tie that's put in, uh, pulled up and then nipped off. As you can see in some areas they're already been cut off. Um, obviously we don't want these protruding up through the concrete so they've got to be cut off down neatly at the, um, at the, the, the buckle there. So the boys are doing a good job. It's a tedious job. It's a job that's got to be done properly. See even the stools are there, they're insulated from this, see this support stool? It's insulated from the top, it's insulated there, there, and so it's tied on the bottom. It's a big one. So different size ones for the different size uh, bars. There's a 16 mil and there's 20 mil for the deeper, the deeper pits. That middle bay, it'll have a camber in the middle. So it'll go like that. So it'll pull that way and this way. The operatives in Cockrick Place is working out in F5. We're here for the first major pour in August 2010 and we poured the, the 350 cubic metres in the undercroft for the uh, transformer bay. So two or three gentlemen out there have been here all that time, so they're well experienced in placing concrete. I've done a bit of everything here. Not only concrete, just the last couple of months, the last few months we've been doing all the concrete. Of course there's a lot of it. 
one? No, nah, we've only been to this about four us for about the last three weeks. There's 83 cube in each one, which takes a bit of time. Yeah, they are going down good. We're having a bit of trouble with the concrete sometimes. Just got to ring them up and sort them out and get the right bloody mixture. Get the right consistency. Yeah, it's living up really good. I've been here since April, middle of April 2010. So just coming up to two years now. Um, pretty much involved in a lot of the things here on site. Uh, we're just doing the service trenches here and in the final stages of wrapping up the civil's work. Behind uh, here you can see a uh, side wall of a cable trench being delivered. This cable trench is uh, connecting uh, the existing relay room to the new bus uh, C area. It's the new bus C for the uh, supply into pole 3. There's, there's a large amount of cables, approximately 100,000 metres of cable to be installed and then each end of the various lengths of cable will be terminated into its appropriate termination and then each termination check for continuity from, from, from the two and, and uh, end area. So yeah, a lot of work, so uh, to date um, we haven't pulled one metre of cable associated with the outdoor equipment. There's some only, only cables been installed is internally within the building associated with the building services. So we hope to have the um, cable schedules, cable list uh, released from Siemens uh, come the end of this week. Uh, so we're looking forward to then setting up, a, or Electrix will set up a cable pulling team and they'll be dedicated to pull it up to 100,000 metres of cable. Behind me you can see it's the main um, cable duct run, it's the open trench design, which still have lids over top, and that's where all the uh, control and indication cables and power cables will run from the control building, out through these ducts and out to all the equipment that's out in the yard there. Um, further down you can see there's two ducts, and that's for uh, diversity, to make sure we've got diverse routes to all the equipment, so if we have a problem with one, that the uh, control and protection and everything will operate uh, via the other system. It is looking good, yeah. As I said already, it's, it has its challenges um, with, with live, live works and, and safety and hazards and risks. Um, and also the design um, being a bit slow in places and waiting for proper drawings. But uh, yeah, it has, it has been good. I think it is good. Well, we'll talk we'll finish it at Easter, so I'm finishing at Easter. We made other plans for after Easter. Apparently there's not going to be much left after that, but that's what they said last year. Too late, I'm gone at Easter. It's important now that we get all the cable trenches, cable ducts and that complete, so we've got continuity just to commence the cabling from all the field devices back into the control room. There's a big challenge ahead to get this cable started.